this is Pat McDonald, your host for Vote for Vermont, where our tagline is listening beyond the sound bites. Ben Kinsley is joining us today, and Ben is, you have to tell them about Imperium. <laughs> yeah, so I have a consulting firm uh, called Imperium Advisors, and we do um, a lot of public policy development, uh, as well as uh, a number of other things, a little bit of government relations, a um, little bit of uh, media consulting, things like okay. that. So lobbying. Lobbying, yeah. We've really jumped the, uh, the broom or something because we are both lobbyists. It's a sad thing after all these years. <laughs> <laughs> well, what you follow that? the regular progression, right? Well, I do. That's true. I'm just I'm an older lobbyist, which they all are. Anyway, and our guest today is Charlie Papillo, who's the host of Travel with Charlie. Right. Welcome to nice the to show. Nice to see you both Thank again. You. Yes, absolutely. Yes. As, as guests on my radio program at yes, one time. Exactly. It's, it's it was a couple of years back. ago. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> it couldn't have been too bad, right? If yeah. I were inviting you back. Charlie retired last year after what, 20, 30 years? 20 years. 20 years. 20 plus years doing the morning yeah. show. With yeah, yeah he did a morning yeah. show uh, on WVMT with Charlie, Ernie, and Lisa. Yeah. Um, and so, Charlie, could you tell us a little bit about your background? We always ask people to do that. Sure. And the fun on Charlie, Ernie. You didn't bring me any food, Charlie. I well, just, you know, I, 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 I apologize. Isn't that a rule on your I, show? Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> you had to bring him big time stuff. That yeah, was a staunch rule. And, yeah, but, it, you know, <laughs> and it's funny how that whole thing started was basically uh, like everyone that's in this business in the radio business anyone that tells you they're they're original they're lying we all stole from everybody yeah, right. else you know <laughs> yeah. so I mean there's only a few originals this you know Steve Allen uh, Jack Parr and I'm, I'm going well beyond yeah, ben, right, no, ben's ben's who are these guys are yeah, Johnny Carson Jackie Gleason <laughs> you know those are the originals we we, we all copied from yeah. them and I copied from from the great Howie Carr on uh, oh, WRKO awesome. and of course he was on you know my radio yep. station WVMT and he still is and how he had this thing about graft, and uh, you know, you always think about you yeah, know graft bribes. with <laughs> with politicians right. and stuff. And I said, yeah, that's, what a great concept. If you want to be on the show, we'd be happy to have you on. Make sure you bring something, and that sort of determines <laughs> how long that's the true. segment will go. Yeah. And it, because I'm good friends with uh, Senator Mazza, who owns a general store ten minutes from our radio oh, station. Yeah. It used to be people would stop in and, get from and they'd, they'd get a pie or they'd get yeah. scones or something. I mean, you know, the day that I told Dick we were retiring, Dick was like, I'm going to have to lay a person off because <laughs> people won't be coming <laughs> by so to get funny. pies anymore. Uh, that's so, great. <laughs> yep. As far as my background, I mean, I've um, radio was my first love. I knew when I was 10 years old, I knew what I wanted to do. I wanted to be in radio. I wanted to play music. I Ooh. wanted to be a disc jockey. Um, and it took me a while to kind of get into that. You know, I went away to Boston. I went to uh, junior college, studied mass communications. I went to professional school for one year. And um, it took me a long time before I actually got into it. I think I was probably in my late 30s when I started working for a mobile DJ company here in, in Vermont. Right. And from there, I got an afternoon drive job at uh, WVMT when they were music. And that lasted for about two years. They ended the format and said we're going to news talk oh, and no. I said that's the end of my radio career just got started and, and it's going to end and they said well we're going to do a live and local morning show and that's all we're going to do lo local huh. so we need to look for somebody to co-host with Ernie Ernie was yeah, the news right. guy and Ernie's going to still do the news we need somebody to, to work with Ernie and thank God for Ernie I mean Ernie and I developed this relationship I was on from 10 until 3 in the afternoon, and Ernie was on in the morning. Are you serious? 10 to 3 in the afternoon. 11, 12, 1, 2, yeah. that's four hours? Yeah, oh yeah. Oh my yeah. God. I but did you're too. playing I music. Did. Well, all you're right. playing well, music, know, you know. you got to still be awake. Well, you know. talk for four <laughs> hours a day. <laughs> so, you know, and this is back in the day before everything was on computer. You actually pulled carts. Again, Ben, mm. you know, you, you, <laughs> I can imagine. It, it looked like an 8-track, yeah. and it was a cart. So you'd go and you'd pull your music for your show. And I'd go in an hour before to pull all my music. And while I was in there, of course, Ernie's doing the last hour of his show. And he would, like, come on the air and he'd start saying something. And then he'd, he'd well, Charlie Papillo's in with me now. And he'd open up the mic and we'd start talking. And next cool. thing you know, Ernie and I just, we get along. Yeah. And we like to goof off. Yeah. And that was the that was common good. bond. We just, we loved making people laugh and yeah. goofing off. So when the, the owners said, well, we have to do a national search to find someone to work for Ernie, and Ernie's always been one that he would get mad, like when he finds out, you know, the, the, the chief of police isn't somebody that was a patrolman for 40 years. Oh, right. that, oh. He said, why don't they hire from within? So he said, 
well, what are you looking for? You got somebody right here. All right, we'll give them a shot. So they said, come in for the next two weeks and play as little music as possible. You can play some music and just talk and see how it works out. And Great. Yeah, 20 years yeah. later, well, it I worked out. I heard a story that yeah. when Lisa joined you, yeah. that Ernie was, uh, Ernie that two was, things. Well, you know, Ernie's, <laughs> Ernie's like, he's, I don't know if you call it old school or whatever, but he doesn't like breaking, change, he yeah. doesn't like change. That, change. That you got it. So, well, I, as old as so it was nothing about, you yeah. know, feminists or none of that, you know. Um, it was simply about... He didn't like the change. It's like, well, what are we bringing the third person in? Well, yeah. it makes things easier. There's a third person there. If I want to take a day off, we don't have to do yeah, best of. Right. There's somebody here. The two of you can still, and vice versa. So, yeah. and it was a different viewpoint. You know, it was a female voice. Right. You know, you're always looking. You want to get more listeners. You broaden your spectrum, and it worked. And Lisa was with us uh, for ten years. She left uh, just about seven or eight months before Ernie and I finally retired. Right. So she, That's the great. last ten years, she rode the wave with us. That's good. Well, you all made, you made us all feel very relaxed and uh, joking around, so that's yeah. good. That's I mean, right up my alley. It's one of the top morning shows. <laughs> well, I, mean, I have to say, when, sure. I, when yeah. he announced, when you announced your retirement, I said to my husband, I give this man six months. <laughs> yeah. And he yeah. said, no, no, I'm going to continue my pizza business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. which we'll talk about later. And the phone later. rings. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the and phone rings. And here you are. So tell us a yeah. little bit about um, your new gig, as we well, say. Well, uh, you know, it's funny because, you know, Mike Smith, who you know very well, yep, former right. administration secretary, and he's had many jobs yes, he other has. than that. And, and I always joked with Mike because he would retire from a job and, Next thing you know, he's, Popped up he's interim this, and, he's, yeah. and he, he's a fixer. He goes in, he fixes right. it, and then he moves on, he does another thing. And, right. he, and we would joke about, you retire, and the phone will ring. Like, people right. want right. to hire you and want you to do things. And sure enough, I, you know, I, I hosted a debate for the, the city council candidates in Burlington. Somebody called me up and asked me yeah, if I would right. do that. Can't get away from it. So uh, a friend of mine, I know a friend of yours, Brad Furlan. Oh, for sure. Um, we know. Calls He's me up. The show. Uh, you know, Brad uh, and I have known each other for mm -hmm. years. Uh, he would call, call me up or email me about getting guests on the, the morning show on WVMT. So oh. when Brad calls me up and says, eh, I got an idea for a, a video project. Are you up for it? He says, you're retired now. And, and I said, well, I'm open to, right. to hear about it. I, you know, kind of thought, I'm not going to work. I'm just going to do my pizza business, and that's it. So we talked, and I've, I'd always thought about, you know, doing something in TV right. at one point or another. So it's a little late in life, but it's not too late. It's never too late. It's <laughs> never too late, right? Yeah, well, look at this. <laughs> so I said, let's try it. And I'm having a blast with it. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, it's that's a lot great. of fun. Well, we're it looks learn. like a lot of fun. Yeah. 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 And Ensign, Ensign Tebbets was on your last show. And really, yeah. he came in here and he was all talking about it and how excited yeah. he was. It was pretty which is hard to do with Ensign because he's kind of a laid back kind of guy. Yeah. And he loved it. You know, I mean, 20 years as a news director for Channel right. 3, exactly. and um, you're able to have fun with him. You yep, know, sometimes right. you think these people are very. They're, you know, all, you know, all business. Yeah, and right. the, no. no, not at all. I mean, we had a, we had a blast. We had a blast. So that's good. Yeah, well, and he can be a tough critic, too, coming from the news business. He worked yeah. there for quite a while. And I had to work with him. It's like, you know, I, I don't know anything about working in front of a camera, right. and all of a sudden I've got a guy that's, you know, he cut his teeth on, on camera. And well, he set up this studio for me. Um, when he came on the, on the show, I didn't have anything really. <laughs> oh, accepted. yeah. And he, I said, well, give me, you know, your criticism. Yeah. Was it good or bad? He said, he said, you were great. He said, but the studio... <laughs> we need some help. Blank. So I kept. So where'd the fern come from? Well, is that's that that's the Bill huh? Doyle oh, memorial oh, fern? Yeah. That yeah. one stays on here. We had to have that in somewhere. It had to yeah, be right, exactly. Yeah. And then this is from my RV. All that stuff. <laughs> so anyway, I kept sending him pictures, and I said, "Is this good?" He goes, "Yes, that's good." So, Ensign, thank you, Ensign. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway. All right. So uh, I think we're going to talk a little bit about the show. Yeah. Um, and you have. Five episodes out now? Four, four or five? I um, four. I think there's about four that are out. Four. We've actually shot eight. Oh, wow. I didn't and know I've got that. And I've got can. a couple of more. Well, they, you know, this is something that, and, and you know as well, you know, in doing right. this, that you don't just shoot it. it it's no, right. edited. It takes a while to edit, yeah. it, it takes a while to get, uh, get it exactly the way they want it. You know, they look at, we look at it first, like, oh, let's change this, let's yeah. change that. So a lot of changes. Uh, I've got a, another one we're shooting next week. So Great. we try to do two in a single day, which can be complicated yeah. because you've got guests in the morning and guests in yeah. the afternoon and you try to 
to you know call people up and and have everyone yeah that works I'll be there at nine and then okay yours is at two well that doesn't work so then you try to switch things around so it's a little different than you know what I was doing with the radio show right, and right. you could always you know move people around or it was always before you had to be at work because right. it was like seven or eight o'clock in the morning you're right. doing an interview you know or just keep talking and nobody know the difference and, well <laughs> yeah we yeah, had we had a show like that yeah, we had no guests so well, we just we just chatted yeah, that, happens. <laughs> that happens you know we had multiple right. times where you had a guest that either didn't show up or yeah. you called and they were west yeah. coast and they didn't answer oh. Oh, three yeah. hours oh. behind us yeah so i just you call this vermont politics in real life what's the yeah travels with charlie vermont politics in real life and what we're trying to do is have an open conversation it's a lot like what i did on the my radio right. program right. have people um, you know talk from with differing points of view always uh, in a respectful manner. I mean, I take pride in the fact that a lot of the guests that I had on my show, I didn't agree with politically, but <laughs> no, we, yeah, you have to do it. Yeah. I, and I, but I, I didn't mind it. It yeah. wasn't like you know, you know. I, I mean, I got along with them. A lot of them I liked personally. I didn't like their politics. You know, Peter Shumlin, I got to say, I got along with him personally. It's oh, like well. you know, it's, it's hard pretty, not to get it's along. pretty it's hard a yeah. to not man. get along with yeah. Peter Shumlin. Yeah. Um, there wasn't much I liked about his politics, but um, you know, Bob Kiss, Pete Clavell, I consider Pete Clavell a, a, a yeah. friend. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I had a great moment with Pete Clavell um, years ago. This is when instant runoff voting, the first time. They oh yeah, talk oh. About instant we could do a voting. show just yeah, on that. <laughs> and. I still don't know how it really works, and I and we had the, it, we never really went for a gotcha moments where you try to embarrass your guest. We never we never did. And with Peter, you couldn't embarrass him anyway because he was he'd laugh it <laughs> off. <laughs> exactly. And you know Ernie and I still talk about it to this day. And I wish that we had a clip of it oh. because we asked him, well, Peter, how exactly does it instant runoff voting work? Right. And he's like. No, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and he um, didn't. As long as he wins, what does he care? He, he didn't know. <laughs> right. and I was like, and this was perfect. I mean, it just it just explained exactly what we're doing, and yeah. it wasn't meant to embarrass him, but he yeah. really couldn't well, explain it. I think it's that's hard, and that's actually. why it failed. Quite yeah. honestly, is because they couldn't explain it. It's not, I mean, it's, it's not that crazy of a of a system. It's just that you have to understand how to explain it. Right. To people. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, well, we could, I could, yeah. you know, get a whole conversation. <laughs> well, yeah, the woman voting, who, who you that. interviewed was here uh, before the show started. We were talking about instant runoff. And yeah. I explained to her that I'm the, I'm still out. Uh, judges out. I haven't decided yet. Cause yeah. I don't understand. Now you that. vote once. I mean, yeah, you right, know, it's, come on. Right. It's, yeah. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's an interesting concept. Well, we yeah. should do a show on that sometime. Yeah, <laughs> but you have to think. It's not you vote thinking that if your first vote doesn't come in, you know, what's your second vote? It's like people don't think that way. No. Well, it basically Who do you support don't promote with the and I don't want anybody else. Mark. I want him or That's her. That's it. Right. Well, from a voter standpoint, you go in and just say, here is the order that I would prefer to have them in. So if I can't, yeah. if this person doesn't win, here's the next person yeah. that I would Maybe like Maybe it makes you pay attention to the to the candidates more than just the one you like. Right. That yeah, could, that's one that thing could that actually it does, be a benefit. Potentially, yeah. yeah. I think um, oh, I can't remember if it's New Zealand or Australia is the only country that has national um, oh, ranked choice oh, no voting. Kidding. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, yeah. we try to make we say this is your show, so we always try to make you look good, sound good, feel good, and and I think we've had people here that I'm sure neither one of us agreed with, but. It's their show, and that's what we do. Exactly, you know? right. And some people right. have watched and they'll say, I couldn't tell yeah. where, where I was. I'm all, that's good. Yeah. Just one or two but I, shows. <laughs> I always had to consider that this wasn't the last show. I, I'm doing multiple right. shows, right. and you want to invite them back on. Right. And right. you don't want somebody to Get see and say, I'm not going on that show. They right. treat their guests right. terrible. Right. right. So, oh, I'm sorry, we wanted to talk about the shows, and I'm going to just do the four yeah. that, because um, I'm that sure out, Ensigns yeah. will be around. Yeah. Uh, oh, fifth show. Oh, Ensigns is the fifth show. Yes, we okay. just we just taped so that. So, why yeah. don't, because we're going to show yeah. a clip from each yeah. of these uh, four shows, maybe yeah. five if Ensigns is up, but maybe you could take us through so them our, and talk our, about So, our first show was a uh, discussion on legalized marijuana, and I got uh, Lieutenant Governor David Zuckerman, who was a guest many times right. on my program and yeah. I've, I've known David from farmers market right. and, yeah. and just being you know in the food business you know David and I are friends and again 
Yeah, don't, yeah. No, we don't too. agree on very much, but, um, you but know, he's I okay could sit, with that. I, yeah, and he, I mean, he is okay with that. Yeah, He'll sit great. down. I love We've him. had him on the show a couple yeah. times. I think. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, he's another one of the guys. You sit down and you have a beer with him, and just yeah, yeah. you know, politics aside, we, yeah, you know, we can be guy. friends. The whole issue of uh, tax revenue. Sometimes I think we get kind of thinking that uh, oh, this is going to be great for Vermont, the economy, maple syrup, Ben and Jerry's ice cream, and cannabis. So I've worked on this issue since I first ran for office in 1994. It was not originally about tax revenue. It was really about why is cannabis illegal and alcohol legal? We've learned that a regulated system is a better way to go. And yet this was a way to potentially capitalize on our agricultural strength. But that is not the original reason to... Um, you think you're going to get that shot, really? No. Oh, okay. I don't think I'm going to get it, but <laughs> right. that's what I'm going to try to do. See, oh, not going to happen. Oh. So does Vermont become sort of this destination? Uh, you know, people well, come I, here, our craft beer. We as political leaders go, hey, look at this great thing we have with craft beer. I think it's a bit hypocritical to say that's a great thing. Well, this is something I agree with you about. Right. I mean, this whole thing about the craft beer. Every day you turn on the TV and there is another ad for this charming thing, beer. Yeah, but David, but what you're saying, if, if, I don't if, think so. No, no, well, I don't, I don't think so, but I think the promotion of beer is causing more highway deaths and other things, and the promotion of marijuana will do exactly the same thing. Well, no one's advocating for the promotion of marijuana. That's well, the oh, sure you are. There's no proposal in the marijuana legalization laws that I've heard of that would prohibit advertising or promotion of this stuff. So would you support it if we added that into the bill? Uh, no, I don't think so, okay. but I think you should. So we shot that episode at Rosie's Lakeshore Tavern in Colchester, and the you know that was our first episode. We really wanted to, to you know to make it look unique. The whole concept is we're not in a studio. I did that for 20 years. The guests would come to the studio, we would get out, and we would shoot mm -hmm. it in an area that sometimes it has something to do with the topic, mm -hmm. sometimes it doesn't. I guess you know alcohol, marijuana, maybe it does. Right. So we're, we're at Rosie's Lakeshore Tavern with Lieutenant Governor David Zuckerman and retired Judge yeah, ben, ben Joseph, Joseph. Yeah. Yep. who is against legalizing marijuana. Yes, he is. Very much against it. Yes, yeah. he is. Ben doesn't even think alcohol should be legal, which I found out doing the show. Yeah. I shouldn't have offered him that beer. Yes, <laughs> I <don't> know. <laughs> Alcohol is going nowhere. It's so embedded in our culture. Oh, it is, Restaurants. Yeah. So you, you can't get rid of that. So we, we, the two of them played pool. Uh, shot darts cool. and played Pac-Man all while we're having this conversation. And Excellent. again, credit to Mondo Media who does the, our taping. Uh, when they edit it down, it's just, it's beautiful. Hmm. Uh, there's a lot of different camera shots, so it's constantly moving. And the whole concept is you keep it moving, you make it short, 8 right. to 12 minutes, and people will well, watch the yes, yeah. And they yeah. get educated. Yeah. Joseph and representative from Essex, Dylan Giambattista. And Dylan came in today and just asked for an off-the-wall cake, and I said, let Joseph show him how to make a real cake. But I also realized that not only do you disagree on how to make a cake and the right ingredients, but also on a couple of issues that Dylan's pretty passionate about, and that's raising the minimum wage in Vermont, as well as paid family leave. So he's all scrubbed up. He's ready to go. Why don't you show them how to decorate this cake? And in the meantime, let's get everyone's thoughts and views. The big discrepancy, I think, in our business, the restaurant business, is between the front of the house and the back of the house. The front of the house is, is making uh, five something now. I think when that goes up, we'll go to seven something plus tips. So they're making around $30 an hour. And the back is not allowed to pull any of the tips from that. So I think that it would be a great idea if they would come up with some kind of an equilibrium system where the front and the back of the house are user friendly towards the income. Does that make sense? Yeah, so you're talking about the tip minimum wage and the discrepancy between what we yes. currently have, which yes. is 10.78 per hour in 2019, right. Right. and then half of that for tipped workers. Right. Yeah, no, that's one of the many challenges with looking at yeah. how we set a floor for minimum wage. Right. And the whole idea here is you set the floor, wages come up, there's more money in people's but pockets. But it should be equal right. between front mm -hmm. and back yeah. of the house and the restaurant. But yep. yeah. The whole thing is we're not just joking and laughing, right. although we had they fun. They learned something. Hopefully they learned something. You okay. see both sides presented. 
and you make up your own mind. We're not telling you what's right or wrong. You make that's, up your own that's mind. That's the way it should be. We just yeah. did a show the other day about freedom of the press um, with uh, Mike Donahue and Steve really need to do two, Pappas. Two shows on that. Yeah, we should have kept on talking for another hour. But they were talking about how how it used to be, where exactly what you said. Yeah. You present the facts, right. and you let the viewer or the listener make right. up. And now Not the newspaper anymore. people are kind of slipping yeah. in there. Well, their ideas about yeah, things. Yeah, you know, exactly. Everything. So with the second show. Then we did um, a segment on the $15, hour, uh, $15 an hour minimum wage and paid family leave. Uh, and again, I thought, let's take it to uh, a business that mm -hmm. it would affect. And somebody that I know very well and was a good friend uh, on my show multiple times, uh, Chef Joseph from Chef's Corner in Williston. Right. And Representative Dylan Giambattista from Essex, who supported $15 an hour minimum wage and the uh, Extended uh, Family Leave Act. So, That's again, true. we get into a restaurant and we're not, I said, okay, here's the deal. We'll, we'll, we'll decorate a cake. So, you know, Joseph sets out this huge spread of, like, cakes and pies, and he's got the pipette thing with the frosting in it. There's a trick. There's, a, a, there's a trick to that. <laughs> yeah, and, and we have this discussion while we're decorating a cake. And, 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 and Dylan, who presented his side very well, he's very articulate. Yep, um, he is. Um, and he was a great sport. You know, in the yeah. end, uh, Joseph and I threw him in the cooler. <laughs> Did you? Yeah. Really, have you been to the new Chef's Corner? I have. It's, oh, it's gorgeous. Yeah, yeah that's it's, great. It's great. I would recommend that. Uh, it's, yeah. it's fantastic. Yeah. And they have yeah. a lot more seating now than they used yeah. to. Yeah. Yeah. The they got the outside area. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, I the think they're opening a gelato. There's a, here's a plug for Chef Joseph, chefscorner.com. Oh, yeah, please. Yeah. Because, uh, <laughs> yeah. You've got to go see the new place. Yeah. Well, I, think yeah. He's, I think he's opening a gelato next door. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Great place for it. You a pizza there? You can just walk around the block there Yeah. So And the third show. And then we did a segment on uh, Act 250 and, yeah. and some of the, uh, the barriers that, uh, that are there and that have been there for years. And, and I thought, oh, who better than somebody that, that fought with all of that right. for years right. than, than a developer, mm -hmm. uh, Jeff Davis, who yeah. brought Walmart awesome. to St. Albans. Yep. And I got Senator Chris Pearson uh, to participate. So we started that off in a graveyard, uh, shot it in black and white. And uh, they've got me dragging a shovel. Uh, maybe they, they'll be showing this clip. But, uh, it's a great clip. You know, I'm dragging a shovel, and it looks like you know, I'm going to go heading up the graveyard <laughs> yeah. with the shovel. It's all in doesn't slow mo. Doesn't put a, a positive light on 46, and, and, does it? And you can hear the birds, you know, in the it's background great. and everything. And then the shovel goes into the ground, and and I, you know, yell out. I hear this is the only place you can get a shovel in the ground in Vermont. <laughs> shovel, shovel ready. Where yeah. did we hear and, that? And, yeah, exactly. and the show starts. And yeah, uh, not to give the whole ending away, but it's, uh, it's great. We actually pitched a tent. Mm -hmm. And it looks like we're out uh, in the wilderness somewhere with my buddies uh, Chris and, and, and Jeff having a conversation about Act anyway, 250. But I'm with my camping buddies here with Chris Pearson, Senator from Chittenden County, Jeff Davis. Wake up. Good morning. Everyone's got a smartphone with them today. Imagine how easy it would be. Get the phone out, click. Boom, you know you got approval. Wouldn't that be sweet? I don't think it's going to be that easy, though, is it? It's a little more complicated. <laughs> a little more complicated pizza, than that. I'd say, yeah, but, yeah. You know. How do you streamline it so it's not going to take you seven, ten years to, to build? They used to have a process called Act 250 Club, where you would bring in a project that could be controversial or could be complicated to try to sort out issues and see what the true issues were, what studies should be done, those kinds of things. It was informal. But maybe it's something that the committee should look at to, going forward to, to make uh, more predictability in the process. There was a time in the 80s and 90s, I think, when people would, just at the conceptual level, start talking to one another before anyone filed for any permits or any of that. And that's something we heard a lot in the, in the year the legislature took going around the state talking to people about how should we move forward. And it, and it just seems practical. And I think a lot of us are trying to figure out how to do that. And it's sort of a pre-approval discussion. And, and it's, you don't need lawyers. You just have people looking face to face and say, well, I want to put in a development here. And people say, well, our kids play ball there. You know, okay, well, let's have that conversation. I have a lot of faith in Vermonters coming together and hashing things out. If you were responsible for bringing Walmart to St. Albans, since Walmart has opened, 
do you find that the people that live in St. Albans and the people that travel to St. Albans are happy that Walmart is here? Are they happy with the project? We, we think so. Generally, the people are staying in the marketplace and not going to Williston or Plattsburgh. So they'll do their basic shopping at Walmart and then go downtown for a specialty and dining and that kind of thing. But we partnered with the city. Um, the project here is in, in the Walmart in St. Albans is in the town, but the city had concerns about the impact on their downtown. So yeah. we had negotiations, fruitful discussions, and ended up making an investment in the city and some buildings to make sure that that our interests were down there as well as out in, in the town of St. Albans. And these are the kinds of things, you, these are negotiations, right? And, and the whole way through, you're trying to balance the citizen's voice and the developer's needs. It's a bit of a legal process, but because exactly. we're forcing people to the table, yeah. that's what comes out of it. And, and you, gotta, you gotta hold on to that spirit and see if you can cast away some of the- uh, I don't know about you guys, but I'm getting hungry. All right. TrueNorthReports.com. You got to see the ending. Yes, right. Yeah, the ending That's is pretty the good. Ending. The ending is really good. Is right or wrong, or just ending? No, the no. ending is just a surprise. It's where we, where, we, surprise where, we, where we oh. really are. But what I love about that, and this is true of really all of your shows yeah. um, that you've done so far, is uh, is that um, you film them in unique locations with some yeah. sort of hook. Right. And it's hard to make something like Act 250 right. sexy, right? It's right. hard to get yeah. someone's attention with a, uh, something about Act 250, because everyone kind of knows and they complain about it. Yeah. Governor complained about it. He tried to start a motorcycle shop and couldn't couldn't get the permits for exactly. it. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Um, and uh, so everyone kind of complains about it, but to put it in context and make it fun and engaging, you know, you start out yeah. shooting in a grave, yeah. <laughs> graveyard and end up yeah. with a TV show in a tent. <laughs> like, and yeah. and I'm, I'm, I'm just amazed sometimes, you know, I, I, you know I, I pinch myself thinking that you know, here I am doing this, and I've got, you know, grown-ups, and I'm asking them to lie down in a tent That's like we're good. sleeping, right. and then we we wake up. Yeah. And it's like, you know, I got a senator, and I got a developer who's got, you know, important things to do. Yeah, I got right. developing yes. to do, you know? And, I've, and I've known Jeff that. for I've years, know, too. I've known Jeff, and, too, at the Virtual yeah, Bank. Yeah, and just, you know, they were they're just great, sport. great sports. Yeah. So, again, a credit to my guest that for being great sports. We then went on and did a... A segment on Act 46 I, with uh, Senator Cory Parent and uh, Esquire uh, attorney uh, Dave Kelly. We spent $31 million so far saving money. Um, <laughs> I don't know how you call that savings, but uh, and, and uh, all we had to do was look at the state of Maine to see what the, fi the fiscal consequences of these consolidations are. Correct me if I'm wrong, but Cory, some of those towns that have already merged they're not seeing any benefit, are they? Well, it depends on you know how the mergers worked out. We've seen a lot across the state, but um, you know we saw those early tax incentives early on, um, which was the difference between what Maine did and what Vermont tried to do. Um, one of the failures the lawmakers who wrote Act 46 felt was that there was no incentives in Maine. They just tried to shove everyone together too quickly and didn't didn't relieve pressure. You know, we provided incentives for school districts to merge early. Um, we then passed Act 49 that when things got a little tight and pressure, kind of relief valve uh, and to give some more time and it depends who you talk to. Uh, superintendents will tell you that it, it's the best thing that they've seen in a while and then they're very supportive of Act 46 but um, you know sometimes we hear a different story on, on the streets and towns. Well we, we, we used to call it the Superintendent's Relief Act because essentially what it did was it said you don't have to deal with school boards anymore we're gonna get rid of three quarters of your school boards and they're such a pain in the neck you know all that oversight and instead of doing six budgets you're, you're only gonna have to do one budget so we're gonna make your life a lot easier and I think with the superintendents' lives being made so much easier, maybe we don't need so many superintendents. We know Dave, yeah. we know Dave very well. well. Had yeah. him on several times. Yep. Um, and we shot that at a school in Franklin. Some of it was in the school I was yard. Say, a lot yeah. of it was on the school bus, wasn't it? Most yeah, of it was on the bus. We we were in the playground, and we you know we did some in the. So here's adults. I got them on these little things, you know, rocking back and forth. <laughs> you know, a senator and, a, and an attorney having a conversation. I, so Corey is a and, is a friend of mine. I got yeah. a little bit of a chuckle out of oh, that. Yeah, yeah. Well, good. <laughs> yeah. And and yeah, most of it was shot on a bus. And yeah, I mean it's just key because here we are. We're talking about putting kids on a bus, and you're gonna, you know. God knows how long you're going to be circling around before you get right. home or you go to school or whatever. Mm -hmm. And that was the point. We were on That's this good. bus for a long That's time. Good. You could see everything moving in the background. It was all the back roads of Franklin. And um, it, again, uh, entertaining and, and the information gets out there. But we learned when we did Act 46 that the bus transportation is going to be very expensive because yeah. 
as we said, we were talking before, there isn't a really w big bus station, bus company that can take care of the whole supervisor union. They're still going to have to sure. contract with yeah. smaller things, which which could make the uh, cost ridiculous. Well, in per in particular, um, a lot of the Northeast Kingdom supervisor right. unions, like they're it's such so so large territory wise, they couldn't actually go out and get a contract. Yeah, yeah. with no one could, would contract for that because it's so large. Um, but yeah, that's one of them. Yeah, one of the issues is like, how long is a kid going to be on the bus if you start closing right. some of these smaller right. schools? Right. Exactly. And, um, or you know, it, there's a, there's a lot of issues when you start getting down to the local level. It's not quite as um, and and you covered a lot of this. It's well, not and quite it's, as cut and, and it's dry. forced. I mean, that's right. the other thing, which right. uh, you know, nobody likes being forced. But right. you're also, you know, upon that being forced, you're also being forced to take on some debt. From, oh, and, from or a, lose the money you saved. <laughs> yeah, a so Alice had yeah, to give up the money they saved. Well, and and Franklin, you filmed in Franklin, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, Franklin voted unanimously against the. I mean, when have you ever heard of a unanimous public vote on yeah. anything? And no, they voted no, no. against unanimously yeah. merging. Well, they did that too. And they still got forced to merge yeah. by the state board. Yeah. Barry Town voted three times. Same thing every every time. No. And then the state group said, look, too bad. Yeah. <laughs> so I said, why did you even bother? No, why do you I mean, bother to vote, Just say this right? is yeah. what we're doing. Yeah, Don't exactly. embarrass people yeah. or fool them. Yeah. Seems to me when you have a duly warned meeting, the vote should count. <laughs> but what do I know? <laughs> just an American. So tell us about the fifth show. Well, and then we, uh, we shot one with uh, Agri Agriculture Secretary Anson Tebbets and a organic dairy farm owner. Oh, nice. Uh, Jen Lambert. And Jen's about... 33, 34 years old. I mean, just doesn't fit the mold. Here we go into a, we want to talk about the future of, right. of farming and dairy in Vermont. Um, so you expect you're going to go to this farm and, you know, this old guy comes out. <laughs> and, you know, this young girl who wants to farm, Good. her and her husband. Uh, but she also talked about the struggles and she mm -hmm. talked about Especially the possibility. Right? Yeah, that uh, this is what she wants to do. Luckily, somebody helped her out, not a bank. Um, you go to a bank and say, this is what you want to do. Oh, they won't give you a loan. They'll just laugh. They won't no. give you a loan. So if somebody lent her some money, she was able to, to open the farm. It's a beautiful farm. And it's, it's, it's a robotic dairy farm, which yeah. I've never seen. Yeah, I mean, those I'm, are pretty I'm, cool. That's the, whole, that's the whole deal now. You go to any, any of these farm shows, and that's all their It's amazing. Yeah. Uh, so again, this whole, you know, you're learning about uh, how this industry will continue, will survive in this right. state. And I mean, I learned a lot from it. I'm, I'm a Vermonter. I lived in Boston for about 15 years, but, and I didn't grow up on a farm. I grew up in Burlington. So I don't know a lot about dairy farming, but you know, what I do know is you, know, you go like this, or you put the machine on and you milk the cow. <laughs> the, technology, yeah. the cows actually, they go on, because I joke with Jen. I said, so what's it like you know, getting up at 3 in the morning? She says, I don't do that. Yeah, no, they no. do it electronically yeah. now, right? They do yeah. it. The cows are trained. They do yeah. it on their own. When they, they walk through get the milking milk, parlor, and yeah. they go in. And so there we are standing, and I'm watching them, and they're in line. Mm -hmm. And there's like a pecking order. They know, like you know, you know, this one goes before this one, and they're waiting. <laughs> and and you get milk, and the more milk you give, the more food you get. So Is it's there a, somebody. Are they doing it the old-fashioned way no. with attaching anything to no, it? No, it's, all, to it's totally robotic. So the, totally. the robot goes on. You've got to see attaches. It. Goes on. Goes on. What the teats are? Yeah. Them, whatever yeah. the milk sack. Yeah. Or whatever they call. Oh, so they, they they pull into the <laughs> stall, <laughs> and these things come up and wash it like uh, a car wash, right. and clean. then and there's a little like a laser camera underneath there and. It goes up, it milks them. The more milk they give, the more food they get. So they no know kidding. they come back for food. It's like a graft concept. You yeah. get, well, because you know. they get uncomfortable. They want to. <laughs> no, they know. They know when it's time yeah. to milk. They'll, and it's a, it's a real thing. Like you, um, for, for farms that have, my, my uncle's owned a farm, so yeah. I grew, kind of grew up doing this. But, um, you know, if, they have, if you have an open stall concept, right, <clears throat> um, or a milking parlor, and you have an open yard, they will, the cows will bring themselves in when they know yeah, when they, they know do. it's time. Exactly, and that's exactly yeah. what. If you have a yeah. robotic setup with a milking parlor, they'll they know exactly well, where to go. We yeah. got to go to a farm. I have to see this. Yeah, yeah we'll have to do that. Yeah. See this. So you know, we saw that, but you also see a lot of the struggles that even with the robotics that that uh, dairy farms have. Uh, you know, uh, all of the numbers of the numbers of farms that have closed in this state in the last right, ten and twenty right. years. It's just it's unbelievable, and you're competing with the Californias and the. Uh, you know the 10,000 dairy farms, and I think we were 
around six or seven hundred. Yeah. Yeah. Ensign told us very interestingly, though, that even though we've lost numbers, which is very sad, productions up, productions yes. up because of the technology. Yes. So we right. haven't fallen in production. Right. We've just fallen. Yeah. And, and we do have a niche market here. I mean, yeah. when you consider, you know, the Vermont brand, mm -hmm. um, right. you know, Vermont milk, Vermont cheese, you know, right. yogurt, all of that. You got Cabot, you've got yeah. Ben and Jerry's, yeah, you've Vermont got Creamery, Vermont yeah. Creamery, yeah. all those things here that are yeah. producing, so it exactly. doesn't have to travel that far. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, um, what else do you have uh, for shows coming up or things well, that you're working on? Well, we've uh, we did a show on solar with um, with Mary Powell. Um, we're we're going to be, be interesting. Yeah, that's that a good. Be. Yeah, we've yeah. got uh, we did one on. Uh, Closing schools, uh, you know the, the oh, really? colleges. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that is just oh, yeah. that yeah. is terrible. Yeah. Who three did colleges. you have on for that? We day? had uh, Ted Brady, who is the deputy. Oh, deputy. Secretary. We've had Ted on. Secretary. Yeah. Yeah. And then we had a we had a person that actually worked for College of St. Joe's. She graduated, I believe, from College of St. Joe's, uh, and she was working there. So Why she was out of a job. Why did you pick Ted Brady from economics? I couldn't get Mike Schurling. So oh, don't let, no, don't, meant, don't let, Mike, don't no, let no, Ted I'm hear sorry, that I'm now. Sorry, I'm sorry. But <laughs> I, I'm just wondering about the, the, I asked, the department I asked rather than education. Um, because of the jobs, the, lo the impact I, I, of the yeah, laws. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, Ted and, is very good. He's very And articulate. actually, yeah, and I, I mean, actually, they're doing a lot to, to work with these. Oh, really? Uh, to try to keep them? Yeah, I know with Green Mountain College, they're, I think Ted had a meeting there, you know, within days. Oh, I see, sure. When you that consider the economic impact on right. the town, you know, restaurants close, yeah, uh, hmm. you know, businesses, I, yeah, pull right, out. sure. I um, I, I haven't, I don't, I'm not really that familiar with any of those three schools, yeah. But um, I'm a Norwich grad, and I can appreciate how much of an impact a school like that has on that community. I mean, Northfield exactly. would be nothing, yeah, if it wasn't yeah. for. Right. If it wasn't for the college, yeah, like it's it, there's just really nothing else. You got darn tough socks, but that's really about it yeah. going on in town. Yeah, but all the you know restaurants and, and places like that where students frequent rent and and uh, you know rent graduation time when parents are in all of that. You know the, the bed and breakfast, all of right. those they all yeah. prosper. When that something like that leaves a town, that's yeah. that's a big hole to fill. It's huge. Yeah, yeah. it's a huge hole. Yeah. Um, cool. So uh, what else? Let's see here. I've got a couple. Couple questions. Um, so, what do you plan on doing during the legislative session? Are you do, planning on doing anything kind of specific to that, or just kind of keep well, going just kind of you know keep an eye on what's hot, you know, topics right. that are hot. That's you know that. I yep, mean, that's sure. that's what uh, right. that's what moves, um, you know, the clicks. That's you know, you want to hit on things yep. that are that are interesting to people and and obviously controversial. Yep. And I don't think it's going to be hard to get any controversial no, uh, topics sadly not. <laughs> so I think when the I, legislature I think uh, the ones that didn't pass last oh, year they'll be back be there right January. yeah we're yeah. back so you've had i read an article we've got some very specific <laughs> things you want to you want to touch in your show um you know like um property tax yeah. and, and the budget and, yeah. and that sort of stuff i think it's probably similar to to what we're trying to yeah. do. Yeah, well, it's all things, yeah. and you know, that's something I learned, uh, you know, in years of doing a morning show, you could sort of gauge what was popular by the phone ringing. If oh. you were talking about something that wasn't popular, it's like, well, we're not getting any calls. Right. And when, when you're doing that kind of a show, it's like, we're not playing music. Yeah, you the, want them to call? Yeah, the records that you play are yeah. actually the phone calls. So right. it's like, keep the calls coming. And money issues always the minute you start talking about your pocketbook oh yeah man the lines light up and uh, taxes any of that you know what kills me though i'm gonna maybe we should cut the video yeah. just kidding <clears throat> um to one day uh we had all the candidates in before the election yeah what did you hear from constituents they listed them all and this was everybody no matter what party yeah they listed uh, education uh, property tax yeah. Um, and blah blah blah. Yeah. And, and what did they work on when they got exactly. down there? Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. really? Yeah. Like, Banning right? plastic bags. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> it's I, like, I, are you listening? If, yeah. Well, that's what we were saying. We had them back, and I'm like, hello. Yeah, right? but right. Uh, but was. who keeps electing them back? Well, it's because they keep tell coming back and saying the same things, right? I'm, we're yeah. going to work on this, this, and this. It's the same. It happens the same thing at the national level, right? It's yeah. always the other guy. Right. Yeah. It's, that, it's the yeah. other representative from the other town yeah. that's screwing everything up. It's not. It's, <laughs> it's not, not me. me. No, no. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's, just, it's the same thing here. It's just yeah. at a micro scale. Yeah. It's like they go back. They say all these things to their constituents. We're going to work on this, this, and this. 
get to Montpelier and and they don't and they don't. Yeah, yeah. that's right. really what yeah. what happens. They don't. And so. nobody calls them on them. I, uh, there are some legislators who I know. People don't even know how they vote, but they show up to the chicken pie yeah. suppers and they yeah. shake hands, so they think they're wonderful. Well, you always say remember in November. I mean, it's a great <laughs> slogan, right? but I don't think people. I have do a new remember. one. You ready? To yeah, yeah. You can't afford free. Yeah, there you go. Is that good? Yeah. I'm going to use that one of these days. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I, I, in doing my research for having you on, there was an article in Seven Days mm -hmm. from 2017 that talked about you all. Um, about your show yeah. and how you have big names and serious yeah. decision makers. Can you talk a little bit about memory? About Going the down, radio, the radio show. The radio yeah. show. I apologize. The yeah. radio show about any memories oh, or man. things you'd like God. to forget. No, or? I don't. Uh, not really nothing that, that I choose to Some forget. Good, I mean, it was all just a stuff. blast. Yeah. A lot of fun. Uh, I had an opportunity to talk with some really big names. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and you, I, I saw that in the article. Yeah. You should mention uh, some. And of I those remember here. some of them yeah. uh, vividly. Uh, uh, Michael McDonald from the Doobie Brothers is one that just really hit me because, you know, here's Michael McDonald, you know, Doobie and, and all that, you right. know, all kinds of hits and everything, and he agrees to come on our show. He was promoting a new CD that he had. It was kind of a different kind of music or whatever, so he needed some exposure, obviously. Yeah. But, you know, I've, we, I, I did a ton of these interviews with people that their, their publicists would book them, they would come on. It's like, okay, I got to do yeah, my, right, right. my 10 yeah. minutes. And they'd come on with you. And then, thank you very much, they'd hang up. And Michael McDonald stayed on the line after he said, and we'll be right back after the news. Thanks for being with us, Mike. And he talks with me for like a minute and a half. That was a great interview. I enjoyed being wow. on with you. Thank you very much. And I'm like, wow. <laughs> this guy, <laughs> nice guy didn't hang up. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I interviewed Bill Cosby. Before, oh, before, 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 before all of that, <laughs> and Bill was another one. You know, he's been to Burlington a number of times uh, mm. to do his show. I, didn't his um, his daughter go to UVM or something? Oh, really? I no, thought, I don't know. Something that. like that. He had, some, sure. he had some tie to. Cool. He did have some ties to Vermont. And yeah. He brought it up in yeah. our interview, and we thought it was going to be, you know, one of these things again. You know, they we'll give you ten minutes, no more than that. Bill stayed on with us for about twenty minutes. Wow. He was cool. funny yeah. as hell. Um, Who and, knew? and just and and he wanted to stay on with us and and he you know he was telling stories about being in Vermont and everything right. so it it worked uh, but again another one I, I'm just amazed that you know some of these people I've been able to talk with another one was Dom DeLuise oh my god who funny. I love Dom yes. the funny guy right and Dom had a place in in Vermont oh no kidding and I just you know hounded and tried to figure out a way to get him on and. Finally. Do you know who Dom DeLuise is? I again, I, I know, again, I know. <laughs> I, I was watching his face. He has no clue. Just, you know, Google Dom DeLuise <laughs> and Burt Reynolds I'll together to okay. in movies. You know, Dom yeah, and right. Burt together, together. Just hilarious. Yeah. This funny guy. One of these guys. Just, Sorry, I didn't mean to. But I can see from your face. No, I mean, when uh, you, you know, this is, there's some real talent there. Just a, yeah. a super funny, funny yeah. guy. And Dom, I don't know if I can tell the story. I, I suppose I can, but... Um, I asked that Dom, I said, um, okay, before we sign off, Dom, I just want you to say, I listen to Charlie and Ernie on WVMT. Hi, right, it's Dom DeLuise. I listen to Charlie and Ernie on WVMT. Oh, yeah, sure, sure. And we did this on the air. So I said, uh, so he says, okay, let me write it down. Charlie and Ernie on w WM, I said WVMT, W, William, V, Vermont, M, Mary, T. And I was going to give the T, and Dom yells out, can I say it? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> he yelled out that. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> and, it, and, and it went out on the air. Oh, my word. And, and <laughs> yeah, because you don't have a lag or anything. Yeah, it's no, not like it hit no, a button. No, no, like, no. It didn't have, and, he didn't apologize. We all oh, laughed. That's, that's, we just yeah. laughed. That, but I mean, that's Dom. Yeah. And he just boom. He just right. he just threw it right that's in your lap. That's your assignment for the week. <laughs> you <laughs> gotta, you gotta come back and report. Seriously, and I forget the name of the movie. Uh, you should all do it. Burt Reynolds and Dom DeLuise, and I and Burt thinks that he's going to die. He's got this sickness, this disease. Right. So he hires Dom DeLuise and tells him that he wants him to kill him. But oh, I already like the way this is going. And, 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 and then he finds out, and he says, "No matter what I say, yeah, don't believe you. Me. Don't you need yeah. to? I want to die. You need to kill me." 
Um, and then he finds out he's not sick. <laughs> oh, no. He's trying to save you. Yeah. Oh, no. And Dom's like, and Dom's just got this look in his eye like he's coming after him. <laughs> so you'll love it. Let me know uh, how you like it. I will, yeah. I will look that up. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Um, gosh. Uh, so anything else that we should talk about? We should talk about the pizza. Wow. Oh, yeah. Pizza. Where, where are yeah. you I next? had no idea about this, by yeah. the way. Yeah, this yeah. is... Well, this is our 10th year. My wife and I started Pizza Papillo, pizzapapillo.com, on the web. <laughs> Plug. Instagram and Facebook. Uh, and boy, I can tell you, you know, you know, the, the radio program was instrumental in, in, oh, I bet, in, sure. in boosting um, our, um, our company because we were able to talk about it. And even today, it's like I meet people that heard me on the radio, and that's why they that's called great. me. Uh, to to do their wedding or their anniversary or whatever the party is. Uh, but I've always loved making pizza. And I always had a dream about someday maybe I'd own a pizza shop or something. And then I, I always got cold feet when it came down to paying rent and right. having employees. And Big like, investment. And yeah. just right. this huge, you know, bureaucracy. And it was uh, our son who actually came up with the idea. He said, why don't you get a portable oven and you can do farmer's market? And I said, that's not a bad idea. Right. And that's what we'll do. So we did some research together, and I found a company in Boulder, Colorado that imports ovens from Italy. They put them on a trailer. It's all custom made. And that was our first thought, was that we would do farmer's markets. Right. And thanks to uh, my friends at, at Mazza's uh, farm in Colchester, you know, Sam Mazza's farm. Uh, mm. I was... Uh, when I was a mobile disc jockey, I used to do all the, you know, the strawberry oh, oh, festivals yes. oh, and everything. Yes, I right, did sure. the hokey pokey with yep. the kids oh, and the, you know, all the, all the, <laughs> all the, you know, fun things. And uh, I said, you know, I'm not doing that anymore. I want to start uh, this pizza business. And uh, can you help me out? Can you, can your baker make right. some dough for me? Right. Yeah. And they said, why don't you bring your oven to our store on the weekends? You can right. park it out front. I said, really? Wow. And again, thanks to, to Mazza's because they really got us, got us off. Uh, and unfortunately, I'm there for just their festivals and, and the like yeah. now because every weekend we're busy doing rehearsal oh, dinners so you're not or weddings. Out and about or? It's well, we're out and about, but, but it's at different working. different yeah. people's houses. Yeah. yeah. So and it's only because of the exposure that we got That's at great. at Mazza's where we would you know park out front and. And make pizzas. So where would us regular people get a well, sample? Well, Thursday nights we're at uh, Snow Farm Winery. I love Snow Farm. In South Hero. Oh, and that's um, that's a great venue. Yeah, that's you great. Know, great music. Uh, yeah, it's a great we, spot. We yeah. had the Phil Bear band there um, a while back, uh, July 4th. Right. Quadro was there last week. Right. One of my favorite bands, young guys uh, and girl. Care. Um, uh, shake the band. They'll be there this coming oh, Thursday. Nice. Oh, so, we have to try that. you know, you could have anywhere from 1,500 to 2,000 people out in the field right. just right. listening to great music and uh, drinking wine and, and beer and, and pizza. And, and eating, eating pizza. pizza. What a deal. Yeah. yeah. They have yeah. great wine there. Whenever they do, I go yeah. out of state to other people's houses, yeah. I always bring yeah. the Snow uh, Farm. Snow yes. Farm. Yeah. And also, here in, in our town, we have a, a, a winery. Uh, fresh tracks. So fresh I bring, tracks is I, good. I yeah. bring yeah. both of them. Nice. Wherever well, I yeah. Boyden Valley's yeah. good. That's, I, Boyden Valley is very popular, but it's a little too sweet for me. A little too speaking. sweet. I like yeah. the dry yeah. stuff that sort of sticks in your mouth. But that's of. that's what's great about but Vermont great. is that um, it was just we got it. you know so diversified with yep. the, you know craft beer and wine and and you know foods and the like. Yes, uh, we yeah. are good. Yeah. And cheeses. And cheeses. Craft cheese. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Craft spirits now. We got stone cutter and. What's the other one? There's one that's opening in Barrie. I can't remember. It's open. Bar Hill. It's open. It's Bar, open. Hill. It's Bar Hill. Bar Hill. Yeah. It's open. Yeah, that yeah. gin is yeah. amazing. It's very good. And yeah. where's yeah. the one up in yeah, Ben's Bay? a pro. It's amazing oh, how no. he's able to get all the mentions in here. Bar yeah. Hill. <laughs> every every and keep keep going. <laughs> Smuggler's Notch. Yeah. Number one vodka in the world. Yeah. <laughs> and what's the one in Greensboro? It's the best the best um, brewery Hill in Farmstead. the world. Yeah. Hell Farmstead. Yes. How, who went to yeah. Greensboro to find the best brewery? Yeah. No I, kidding. How I mean, that's beating Germany. In, I know. Right? That's yeah. incredible. Yeah. That's I mean, it's, it's yeah. crazy. We've got place. so many of the Lawson's. Yeah. 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 I love the, uh, there's a hotel in Burlington. They have a, they do a wine. They have a, a little small minivan. Yeah. And they take you they, around. They do a beer tour. Yeah. And then yeah. they drop you off to get your car. Yeah. 
stamps. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> no, they Think want you to stay at the hotel. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I think that you're supposed to stay in the hotel. So what else would you like to tell our folks about your adventure? Or just to well, you should. Oh, I, I should announce, we are going to have Charlie uh, Papillo's shows here on Orchid TV, and we will let you know how that's going to work. Great, and thank you for and, doing that. Yeah, no and problem. In the meantime, you can, truenorthreports.com, right. you can check out that website. It's also on their Facebook page, True North Reports. You can see it there. Um, you know, I always share it on my Facebook page as well. Great. Uh, and we're also, you know, Pizza Papillo and... I was going to say, next on, time you come on to Facebook the show, you can and on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> we have to go do that one. Yeah, we That's definitely great. do. Absolutely. So thank you all for tuning in. We really appreciate uh, you being here, Charlie. Thank, thank you, you thank so you. much Good for having us. A lot of fun. Adventure. Absolutely. It's fun to be on the other <laughs> side. <laughs> <laughs> See you next week. And in the meantime, keep listening beyond the sound bites.